This is Dr. Kira Manukian from the Buffalo Niagara Vein Treatment Centers and veinsveinsveins.com and also peacebridgehealthcare.com talking about the epidemiology of venous stasis ulcers. It has been estimated that the prevalence of venous stasis ulcers in the general population is around three patients per thousand. It has also been borne out in the scientific literature that for every patient with an opened venous stasis ulcer, there are four patients with healed venous stasis ulcers, giving healed venous stasis ulcers a prevalence of 1.3 patients or 13 patients per thousand. Sex is a risk factor for venous stasis ulcers. The prevalence of men with venous stasis ulcers is higher than the prevalence of women with venous stasis ulcers by a factor of two. Women t- tend to live longer than men, so this seems to be an equating factor when calculating prevalence of a disease in the general population. Does the prevalence of venous stasis ulcers increase with age? Prevalence of venous stasis ulcers increases with age with a peak prevalence between ages 50 and 60. It has been shown that the vast majority of patients have their first venous stasis ulcer before the age of 60. There's also a a linear relationship observed with ambulatory venous pressure measurements with aging and the risk of venous ulcer formation. In patients with an ambulatory venous pressure measurement less than 30 millimeters mercury, the risk of venous ulceration is very small. In patients with ambulatory venous pressure measurements at the ankle exceeding 80 millimeters mercury, the likelihood of developing a venous stasis ulceration is very high. Deep vein thrombosis is a risk factor for developing venous stasis ulcers. A very important observation has also been made that there is a 1 in 6 chance that patients with venous stasis ulcers have a history of deep vein thrombosis. So, deep vein thrombosis is significant risk factor for the development of venous stasis ulcers. Venous stasis ulcers are expensive to treat according to the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Venous stasis ulcers are not only debilitating but costly. In one study from the United States, the cost per year per patient with a venous stasis ulcer exceeds $40,000. The total impact on the healthcare system is over $1 billion per year. I have evaluated patients who have lived with a venous stasis ulcer for 20 years. Although this is not a common occurrence, typically patients come to see us after they have failed to get adequate treatments by their primary care physicians or by wound care centers. A large number of hospital-based wound care centers have opened in the last five years. In most cases, they lack expertise in managing venous stasis ulcers, and their repertoire of care is limited to compression bandages, electrical stimulation therapy, and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This may not be adequate for most patients with venous stasis ulceration. The treatment starts with the evaluation of the patient with a venous stasis ulcer with a comprehensive Doppler ultrasound scan done to exclude deep vein thrombosis, diagnose truncal venous insufficiency, to diagnose perforator venous insufficiency, and also to make a treatment plan for these patients. Truncal venous insufficiency at the saphenofemoral junction or at the saphenopopliteal junction is treated with the venous closure procedure or by EVLT technology or the Clarivane technology. Following this, special expertise is needed to treat perforator vein reflux contributing to localized venous hypertension around venous stasis ulceration and we utilize the best technology which is the EVLT never touch technology for perforator veins. Once these are treated, additional foam sclerotherapy under ultrasound guidance may be utilized to treat surface varicosities and tributary veins that are contributing to venous hypertension. Venous hypertension is the underlying pathophysiology or the reason why venous stasis ulcers don't heal. The Buffalo Niagara Vein Treatment Center and centers are the only center within a 500 mile radius that utilizes the venous closure technology, the EVLT never touch technology, and Clarivane technology to treat truncal venous insufficiency. We also have the best lasers to treat perforator vein reflux using EVLT technology. This is Dr. Karamanukian from the Buffalo Niagara Vein Treatment Centers and veinsveinsveins.com discussing the epidemiology of venous stasis ulcers. You can also contact us by calling 716 716- 839-3638 or go to www.veinsveinsveins.com and www.peacebridgehealthcare.com. Thank you.